Hello, beautiful souls. I hope everybody's having a beautiful day. I wanted to kind of take some time today, it being December 31st, 2020, and just kind of reflect back a little bit on this year. And just uh, also kind of remind everybody that even though tomorrow will be a new year, doesn't mean that all of a sudden we flip a switch and everything changes all in a blink of the eye. You know, our lives are constantly evolving and constantly changing and growing. And so let's kind of just take a moment and reflect back on 2020. And you take a moment to, whether it's later today or maybe you already have, to kind of reflect back on your 2020. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We went down to the beach a couple of days ago, froze our butts off, but it was so beautiful. And I always love to sit on the beach and look out over the ocean. And when it's so still like it was, you can just see all the endless possibilities, how it never ends. And it just goes on and on and on. That's what it looks like. And those are our possibilities. We have so many different possibilities now. Our reality is this one reality right now, but there's so many other realities out there for us to be able to go out and grab whatever we wish, like whatever we desire. And so we sat down and we were reflecting on 2020 and what 2020 is, was for us. And 2020 for me was a year of growth. And I said to another, another friend of mine, I said, actually 2020 was a great year. He was like, it wasn't such a great year for me, but it wasn't a bad year either. It was a good year. And the reason why I say 2020 is such a great year is because of personal growth that I had and actually having this time of stillness and this time to myself um, where I wasn't so distracted about things around me outside influence, I was able to go deep within, connect deeper spiritually, but also enter into the shadows and do the challenging work. It's through the challenges that we have growth. And if I, and I will do this at, at some point, I always take two pictures of myself and put them side by side and, and look at and see the difference within me. And you know what? I, I don't have to do that to know how I feel. The person that entered 2020 is not the same person that is entering 2021. And I love this person that's entering 2021. She is so much stronger than she was last year. And it, and so much happier, but also so much true to who I am. And that's really important. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned about this year is really standing in my truth, taking time to discern what I feel is true. And I've encouraged you all to do the same. And that's really important, especially going to 2021 is to still keep following that same pattern of reflecting inward to figure out what's true to us, to discern what we believe. And there's, there's some things where you may think that what I believe is absolutely crazy and that's okay. And I'm okay with that. And being okay with that is a huge step into me and, and being okay with that, I am able to talk about things 
and express myself a lot more free, freely. And that was really, I stepped even greater into that in 2020. And so discerning what we believe is true and going within is really important. And really the other thing that I feel like I've really worked on and done besides getting into the shadow work and healing things from my childhood that I didn't even realize I was still holding on to even deeper than before. Cause you know, it's always levels. It's always layers. It's like this onion that you keep pulling back and you get deeper and deeper. And I know I'm going through something right now. My ears are like completely clogged and um it's very hard for me to hear. So when I'm with people, I sometimes I keep going, huh, huh? Because I really, my left ear is completely clogged and I don't look at this as something physically that's wrong with me. I look at this as something as a spiritual growth and as a tuning into deeper into my spiritual gifts and being able to relax and listen to what people are saying, not just with my ears, but intuitively will also help my intuitive senses, which is something that in the podcast last week that I talked to, the podcast that la launched on the 30th, talks about us tuning more into our psychic gifts, our intuitive gifts, because that's going to really help us move forward. It's going to help us ascend even more, become greater fifth dimensional beings. So I look at this as a growth. Yes, it is challenging, but it's still a growth that I'm going through. And I kind of lost my train of thought. So we're going to come back here to center. Yes. So, you know, that's part of the lessons and part of the growth of 2020. But also the other thing is being centered and and I just took the moment to kind of center myself and to bring myself into oneness, into wholeness. And that, my friends, was another big lesson of 2020. And when I hosted the course, The Divine Feminine, that is one thing that I was hoping to really drive home. And it is going to be available for you in the future. And you can actually still go purchase it now. But getting in touch with the Divine Feminine and connecting it with the divine masculine and becoming one and whole with it. Because bridging that gap between the dualities and bringing back oneness is a huge lesson to bring into 2020. One, it's, it's something that some of you started in 2020, but it's gonna be something in 2021 that is gonna be really important for you to connect with and drive home. And I, I was listening to somebody on TikTok talking about toxic positivity. And I added my thoughts to it on my TikTok. You can go watch it if you want. It's intuitive heart healer. But she was, she had said something about getting negative, negative and positive. And, and that is something that I've been teaching all year long, teaching to all of you, teaching to my clients at their drug and alcohol rehab is to just accept things for what is. Don't make things out to be good or bad, positive or negative, um, right or wrong. It's just the dark, it's just the light. It's parts of you and unifying them into one. It's you have masculine and feminine unifying them in one, they're both important aspects of you. And the goal is to bring them into oneness, into unity within you. And that has been a great lesson for 2020. And these lessons are going to continue to move forward. And these lessons were brought up because of all these things that we have gone through, right? All these things that has happened, the pandemic, the, the riots that we have and the wear masks, don't wear masks, the presidential election, all these things have been showing us dualities, 
has been showing us fear and how do we move past this fear and, and really learning what's true to you and being okay with other people's truths, but also listening because that's how you learn and grow. And that's how you can begin to even more discern what you believe is true, allowing yourself to see other per perspectives. And when we grow, things do have to leave us. So we do have to let go of things. And sometimes they're physical things, maybe a house or a car or a job, unfortunately a physical being, a person, a loved one, um, a relationship. And sometimes it's just emotions and feelings that we've been holding on to. But as we release these things and let go, and I'm not saying that that's easy to do. Don't get me wrong, because I know that grief is not something that takes two minutes. It's something that we all go through. We all go through different levels of grief. And I'm going to touch on that in a minute. And it's not always easy to let these things go. But when we recognize that when we let something go and something releases from us, there's opportunities for more growth and for us to bring more into our world. We have endless possibilities out there. I said it at the beginning, I will constantly say it. And one of the reasons when I do guidance, I don't give predictions of when things are gonna happen is because you have many different timelines that you can choose from. And you can choose to go through and pick a different timeline and a different reality than what you are right now. And I hope that you all are beginning to see this and beginning to see these things and understand them. The dualities and being one and how there's different realities and you can change your reality. And the one thing we all come down to is this feeling of unconditional love. Unconditional love is what ties us all together. And that has been a driving force for me in 2020 and really connecting to unconditional love, even when I'm grieving and I'm healing, connecting to unconditional love. And it doesn't stop the grief or anger, but it reminds you of the love and hope that is still there within. And so this year we have grieved a lot. We have grieved as individuals. We have grieved as a collective. Whether we have actually lost somebody in our lives or not, we have grieved as a collective from all the loss that has happened throughout the year. I'm sure we've all have had moments of sadness that we have not realized where it's coming from. And that is part of mourning the collective consciousness. And it's not just loss of human life, it's loss of jobs and finances, it's loss of relationships. And this grief for me has triggered grief within that I still am constantly letting go of. And it's okay. It's okay to still grieve loved ones after years and years. And it's not grieving their souls because we know their souls go on and it's endless. At least that's what I believe. You believe what you wish to believe. But that's my belief. And I know that they're there looking after us, looking after me. I could feel my grandmother all around me. 
I could feel my grandfather. In fact, he's been sending me smells of Jameson, which has been driving me up to, up a wall. But um, but I can still grieve their physical loss. Today, I opened up my Facebook page and I saw a memory of four years ago. It's the last time my grandma was able to actually come to my house for cookie day. And uh, I got this, a gift this morning of seeing her smile, which was beautiful. And then in a couple of days, it'll be two years that she passed. And as you can tell, still get emotional when I talk about her. And last year, after their first year of her passing, I wasn't feeling this grief as much as I am now. But if you look back on the year and how it has been compounded and also realize that even though I took time to grieve, there's still another level and deeper level to actually do that. And you know what? It's okay. And the tears are beautiful memories and reminder. I don't look at them as being sad or why you keep doing this. To me, they're tears of love. And I can shed tears of love all the time. So 2020 has been quite challenging in many different areas for many different reasons. Mental health, addiction. You know, I work in the drug and alcohol rehab and the loss of life this year to those with addiction has really touched me because there's been such a increase of loss of life. And part of this is because we still don't know how to deal with addiction in this com country, but it's also compounded by the pandemic and what's going on. So, but through all this, I still look at 2020 as a great year because I know as an individual, I have grown through this whole year and it has brought me just as much joy and happiness. And I have felt the unconditional love even more. And so tomorrow we will be entering 2021 and it's not gonna be this automatically switch and everything changes. It will be a gradual change. And we will still have to face some things that maybe we didn't face in 2020. But going back to, and I've been saying this for a while, people keep saying, I wanna go back to normal. Well, normal is gonna look different. And there are so many different opportunities when we open ourselves up. And so opportunities are going to present themselves to you. And some of them may be really easy, but when you really want to instill change and shift, they will be challenging for you. But on the other side of that is this beautiful growth in life. 2020, one will feel maybe a little lighter as we go through it, but this is life. And, you know, anything in life that we do is constantly growth and working through it. And I, I don't like to use the word work because there is, it's like works a drag and stuff. Um, I, I tried to change it to play, but it doesn't really, hasn't really resonated with everybody. So we're going back to this work but it's constantly for us to move through. We're not meant to be sleepwalking through life. We're not meant to suffer. Sometimes we do go through suffering so that we can come out through this and as a greater being, a greater being of love and light to appreciate love and light even more and to see the light that's all around us and to shine even brighter than we are. So 
as you go into 2021, be optimistic. I be hopeful, but also be ready to put in whatever work you have to in order for you to grow, in order for you to shine your light even brighter. If you think you've already done that in 2020, 2021, you can actually illuminate that even brighter. You can shine even greater than you are already shining right now. And I know sometimes that might seem challenging and hard to believe, but you can bring in more happiness and joy in your life. And opportunities that come to you, whether it's a new job or what have you, um, it, you're going to have to decide what's in your heart, what lights you up to do. You make your choices from your heart, not from your head. Because like I said before, we're moving into a more feminine energy. And planning and setting goals for this year is in a five year is really not what uh, works best, but that doesn't mean go, don't go out and do things. It means go out and accept the ebb and flow in life and the challenges that come up, the gifts that come up and just be open to all the possibilities and set how you want. So set how you want to be. And then when opportunities come up, is that what you want? So let's say you want more time with your family or less time with your family if you've been with them in the house for the last 2020, right? Whatever it is. But let's say you want more time with your family and an opportunity comes up. Does that opportunity gives you more time with your family or less time with your family? And your answer is that whatever you choose is always going to be the right choice because every choice we make is always the opportunity for us to grow wherever we need to grow. So as you sit today, or whenever, if you're listening, take some time and reflect on what 2020 was for you and really reflect on everything, deep down reflection, not surface stuff, not like, oh, I lost my job or my business was cut in half, or maybe you're the opposite because a lot of businesses grew in 2020. I know so many people whose businesses took off in 2020. So don't just look at it on that surface level. Go deep and look at yourself and look within and see how far you have grown in this year. Because I think you will all be surprised as the growth that you've had. And I want you to take that growth and that momentum and move it into 2021 to help you move through this year in 2021. Because when we talked about Aquarius energy and Jupiter and Saturn, we talked a lot about the breaking down of systems. And that is going to continue to happen. So these new ideas and ways of thinking are really, really, really important for us. And to see the opportunities of what it could be. And, you know, you may fail at first, but failure leads to success. Think of how many times they tried to create light. They failed and failed and failed until they actually did it. When they wanted to fly a plane, they failed and failed and failed until they actually did it. Failure creates success. And it's really not failure. It's all learning. You're learning what you have to do next to be even better to make whatever you're creating better. So those are some things I want you to think about in 2021. 
go ahead and check out the podcast about January's energies being adaptable um, because it's really will give you some even more insight, pulled some great cards. And I'm going to end today with actually even pulling a card. I'm going to pull a, a star seed card. And you know what? I'm really liking these cards and probably going to be using them a lot more and connecting more to light beings and star seeds throughout the year. Whoops, upside down. <laughs> oh, perfect. Loosen your grip. Coping mechanisms, density, addiction, let God in. <sighs> Man. That's what we're talking about, right? Loosing your grip on what you think should be and just allow things to be. And allow yourself to feel and let go. Allow yourself to be happy, angry, sad, whatever it comes in. Loosing your grips on your expectations of what healing looks for you, what success looks for you, um, and, and really redefined what it is for you. And let go of expectations of what, what, a, what you're trying to do. We, you know, maybe you want to have your own business and you're, you want it to look a certain way. Don't put yourself in that box. Be open. Be open and allow it to come together the way it's supposed to be. Believe in God, whatever God you believe in, the universe, source energy, but believe in that greater power. Let that shine down through you. Let the goddesses shine down through you. Let the angels, the light beings that are out there to help us shine down through you. You are not alone. We are not alone. You are so loved and so supported. And let them in. <sighs> Loosen the grip. That's all I have for you all today. Thank you for being here and allowing me to share this with you. Take what you want leave what you don't want. If it inspired you to think a little bit deeper, then that's awesome. And if it didn't, you know what, that's awesome too. Because whatever it was, you got something out of it. And that's all that matters. Go out and spread some love. I am sending all my love to all of you. Happy New Year, everybody. Until next time. Bye bye for now.